Hello and welcome to Spry Whimsy Fiber Arts. My name is Peter. I can also be known as Help at Spinolution. So, we're going to look today at some maintenance issues on a bee from Spinolution. This is the king bee that we'll be looking over. One of the items I want to discuss is if you have a wobbly wheel, what you do about that if one of these two drive wheels is wobbly. We'll also basically dismantle a good chunk of this so you can kind of get an idea of how it's put together and what you're doing when you want to try to balance those wheels. To do that, I'm going to have to sort of take it apart. So we'll go through all the steps of that. Not that it's something that most people should have to do, but if maybe you need to clean it out once in a while, because sometimes when we're playing with fiber, there's a good chance fiber is going to get gunked up inside of things. I also have a separate video, something that all Spinolution owners should know, some maintenance on that, about maintenance on the flyer. That is no different from the other video that I already made on that. So I'll link to that up over there somewhere. Um, so you can find that video. I'll probably put it in the description as well. So let me walk you through the different parts of the wheel and some other little things you may want to know and then we'll look at how to balance these when if they're wobbly hopefully they're not but every once in a while they are and that may be a reason that a dry band is popping off when it shouldn't now the first thing i want to talk about is what some people think is a crack or a flaw in the wood these little notches here have a purpose they are there so if i want to take this big heavy band move it up to the next notch to the next whirl I put it in the notch go around and now it's in place I want to go up to the largest one go around and now it's in place that's what those little notches are for they're not a flaw in the wood those are to help you put that band where it needs to be to balance those wheels it's drive wheels um, first take the dry bands off so they can spin freely. So I'm going to pop off the dry bands on the large one over here right now. So now my wheel will spin freely. There is this hole right here for the large one. This one uh, works on the smaller main drive wheel that comes off the treadle. This is the one that then feeds up to the flyer. This hole you put your screwdriver in there until you can feel it sort of fall into a Phillips head screw and you can loosen those up. There are three of them and then you can make some slight adjustments to the balance of the wheel. I just hit the second one and then the third one. Then I can kind of try to tweak it, make sure it's spinning right and even. And then when I think it's right, try to retighten those, get myself lined up again. Make sure you're actually in the screws. And this may take several trial and errors to get right. Tighten that up and then give it a spin and hopefully it's running smooth. Now I'm going to show you the steps to sort of disassemble part of this and it will also help you understand once I get this wheel off what is going on behind that when you loosen and tighten those screws. So it's going to involve taking all the drive bands off, including the little one on the treadle. Set that aside. We're going to have to take the treadle off, loosen the screw that holds this on, and loosen the screw that holds this on. So let me show you first where these screws are. We're going to loosen those and then take the treadle off. To take this wheel off, there's a screw right here that I've already got loosened. So this is what you loosen here, and that'll free up that one. 
Okay, for the big wheel in the back, let's zoom out here. So this is the big wheel. There's a little screw down in there. Let's zoom in on that. There it is. Really hard to photograph. I have my phone to try to light it up for you. So we need to get a screwdriver down in there to loosen that up. Okay, to get that in there, you need a screwdriver that's going to fit in this little opening as I do this. Help if you have a flashlight to get in there. And then you're just turning to loosen that. Don't overdo it, just enough to loosen it up and it will come apart. Now to take all this apart, the treadle has to come off first. So we're going to lay this on its back. And there's a set screw right there. Okay, I'm going to take my 3 seconds Allen wrench and loosen this screw. Don't take it all the way out, just need to loosen it a little bit. Flip this around so it's out of your way. Now I'm going to open this up a little bit and then wiggle it up. There it goes. Now it is in two pieces that come apart and one slides under the other. So everything is sort of interconnected here. Now that I've done that and I already have this one loosened, that slides up and out as well as the big wheel slides up and out. And you can see now There's the screw I had to loosen that you had to come in from right here to do it. So that hole is the one that lines up with one of the three screws on the back of the main drive wheel. And so when you loosen those up, you can kind of try to tweak the balance on this a little bit, tighten them up. It may take a couple times to get it just right. I'm going to set that back into place. And the same thing is true on this one. Let's bring you down there. We have a little hole. You come in from the back and it adjusts one of these three. Those are in place. I can tighten those up now before I put the treadle on. Feel my way around. This angle, I cannot see that. It might be easier when it's standing up. I'll have to do it standing up. This one, I can do easily. Okay, to reinsert the treadle, got my hole here, just lining up with the main shaft there. Now, there are washers here. Sometimes you may need to add washers here or maybe add washers back here to adjust how the drive wheel sits with these whirls. So if things aren't quite lining up and popping off, it may be an option of adding some washers along the way to adjust the position of each of these relation to the others. So this right now just has washers here. There were no washers in here. Slide that on. Now, when you're doing this, this has to line up with the cam here as it goes down. And it's all the way down. Tighten the Allen screw. Now, when I do that, I want to make sure, well, that's right, that still moves. It's only tightening on one side. I can still split that and open up the treadle. Now, you open the treadle for getting a drive band on. 
Now that I have standing up again, I'm going to tighten that screw that I couldn't get to before because I just could not see where I was going. Spin it, spinning true. It's easier if you open this up. Give this a spin. Make sure everything's spinning correctly. Now I'm going to have to reverse my whole process. I just found this little piece, a little spacer ring that came from behind one of these wheels. So I'm going to take it apart and put that back in. I just found it laying on my table. So I'm going to figure out where it goes. It's a little split ring with adjusts and it just sits on one of the two shafts. Now I'm going to put the drive bag, bands back on. I did not leave this one on this time because I wanted to show you how to change a drive band on a Spinolution um, B series wheel. So you have to make sure you take off your little band that holds the treadle together, lift that up, feed this through, get it behind there. Now that's back there, I can close this up. And now that's in position where I can put it onto that one. And then using the notches in the back that I showed you earlier, I can roll that into whatever ratio I want it to be. Now, I made a mistake. I didn't put this one on first. So we're going to take that back off, put that one on first, and then repeat our steps. So that's why you do one before the other. Now, I'm doing this the hard way. Let's see. See, now I can't get around to do that. That's why we need those little notches in the back. Put that there. Find my notch. Go all the way around. And now it's in place. Get into the next one. And it spins freely. Now I talked about adding washers behind here for spacing and there's a couple reasons you might need to do that. So right now in this ratio everything's fine. If I drop that down one, let's get my little notch there to get it in the right spot, it's down one. From here to here this band is rubbing on this. Now if I make a slight adjustment here, bring that to here, it's all fine. It doesn't rub anymore. So if you found that you really had to have this combination, there are multiple ways to get to a ratio on this wheel because you can also make changes up on the flyer up top. So if you can't get to the ratio you need it to be, you may need to add a washer behind there to pull this forward a little bit. And if you add a washer there, you might have to add a washer down there. So that's a reason for maybe making those adjustments. You may be able to, if I have the room, loosen this up and scoot that just a little bit forward. Might solve the same problem, but the washer makes it more stable. Same thing here. For some reason, you just can't get it. Maybe you have to pull this forward. I doubt it. It's more likely this one and then the treadle so you still have clearance. The only thing I haven't done is put this back on here. And that's a hard stretch. The reason for that is to make sure this stays tight. And when you're treadling, before we had that band, every now and then there'd be a little clicking noise if it wasn't tightly put together. It's this solved that problem. Now I had mentioned earlier a maintenance issue on a Spinolution wheel that everybody should know. I'm going to talk over quickly with this one. So after you take off 
your orifice bar, pop off your bobbin, back here. If for some reason you spin the shaft and this spins with it, that means there is stuff gunked up in here and preventing you from having take up. And that's usually your first glue. I can't get it to take up. I've done all everything I can with the tension knob over there and it won't take up. Well, if this spins with this, then you're not going to get take up because there, you need differential rotation to get the take up on your bobbin. So if that is happening, there's a set screw there. You loosen that set screw. You pull this forward. And once you've done that, the, the nut forward, you can slide this around. Don't take it all the way off, but then you can get in and clean behind here where there's quite commonly fuzz and gunk that gets stuck in there or in here. You're working with fibers, it happens. Fiber gets everywhere. Now, I'm going to put this back together. I want you to hear the satisfying snaps of the spin lucian wheel because that is a magnet right there. If you know it's on there right when you get the snap. Come on. There it is. And you should have the same thing. Hooks up, hook down, or pegs up, hook down. Snap, snap. You know it's on there right. Everything should work properly there. One last thing is the tension knob. You don't want this sucker cranked all the way down. It should be fairly loose. I see them when they're just when there's no spring left here. If you have to do that, something else isn't right. You usually back it off, start over. Now, this is one of the newer ones. I'm going to take this all the way apart so you can see all the parts. This is a newer one with a new felt design here. That just slips in there. It isn't reversible like some of the previous ones, but it's really easy with a little screw to replace a piece of felt in here. So that goes back in there. Put the hole, the, the uh, screw over the hole. This piece, you want the plastic up against the tension block, and that's the same no matter what generation of tens tension block. And then just screw this on enough so it stays there. Start there, test it there, add a quarter of a turn at a time to try to work on your tension. If it is cranked all the way down, there's something else going on, and usually it's the maintenance I just showed you in there. Okay, that takes care of most of the maintenance stuff you should ever have to do on a spin illusion B. A um, couple other quick things. You've got your pegs. Those are to hold your bobbins over on the side. There are three of them on a king and a queen, only two on the worker bee because the bobbins are so big you can only put two side by side. Those store here, don't lose them. There's a nice little notch for that. Simplest thing, when you're trying to describe to somebody how do you collapse or open the wheel, grab the piece of wood that doesn't belong. Everything here is Baltic birch plywood except this knob is something else. Give that a pull, collapses down. I usually try to make sure I have my pegs out so they don't hit anything in here when you close it. And make sure that this snaps back in so when you grab onto it, it's not going to open. So I hope you find this helpful. Hope it guides you through what's going on with a B, uh, spin lotion B wheel, and you can do your own maintenance that way. Thanks for watching and keep spinning.